Welcome everyone, I am Palum David in Abuja and this is Africa Matters. Several African countries are in the grip of a US dollar drought. Countries like Kenya, Ghana, Tanzania and Nigeria have been facing the greenback shortage for several months now. It's triggered the valuation of local currencies, caused import backlogs and even led some governments and commercial banks to curb its sale. We look at how this is affecting the continent's 1.3 billion people and ask what can be done to deal with the foreign currency scarcity. Like in many other African countries, the exchange rates between the dollar and Nigeria's local currency, the Naira, has been plunging and setting new record lows this year. It's been under intense pressure after the government's eased currency controls in June, prompting it to lose nearly half of its value. Africa's biggest economy is also facing a greenback shortage because it imports more than its exports, so it's not earning enough hard currency. And the rising global interest rates meant that Abuja spent up to 96% of government revenue on paying interest on debt last year, according to the World Bank. All these have led to a spike in the price of food, fuel and medicine, and Nigerians have to pay more money for less goods. Traders are now turning to the unofficial or black market to try and buy any dollar they can find. That prompted some African countries to start debating whether they should continue trading using the US dollar or switch to national currencies or commodities like gold while trading with other countries. And in countries like Ethiopia, the government has imposed a ban on the import of nearly 40 luxury goods and cars in a bid to tackle the scarcity of foreign currency. This policy has had a devastating impact on small-scale cosmetics traders who say they are struggling to keep their businesses afloat amidst skyrocketing prices and a dwindling customer base. Hanoktas Fire brings us this report from the capital, Addis Ababa. Habta Muteshwama supports his immediate family as well as his parents through his small cosmetic shop and beauty salon. However, the staggering price hikes in imported beauty products have left him unable to cover basic expenses like shop rent. I buy from importers at exorbitant prices and set my own prices accordingly. As a result, my customers no longer buy from me like they used to. It's the same for makeup and hair services. Inflation is higher in every way. For that reason, we don't buy or use the services like before. Rovel Kalati, the owner of Kalati Hair and Cosmetics Supply, is one of Ethiopia's leading cosmetics importers. Despite his efforts to secure foreign currency from various sources, some prices have risen up to 10 times in recent years. The government offers no support to our business. We rely on our resources, like the retention account, as we are unable to access our diaspora account held by the government. The price of goods has skyrocketed, with a chopstick now costing anywhere from 2,000 to 5,000 beers compared to 300 to 500 bills a few years ago. In my opinion, the shortage of foreign currency has dealt a severe blow to most businesses in Ethiopia. The scarcity of foreign currency is not limited to the cosmetic sector alone. All industries, including small and large businesses, are struggling. The Gia Goshu, the Director of Research and Policy Analysis at the Ethiopian Economic Association, believes the problem is due to ongoing instability, conflicts, economic sanctions for the Tigray conflict, as well as the subsequent obstruction of foreign currency inflow. The first and the immediate action by the government should be restoring peace and order and ensuring political stability. Otherwise, you cannot uh, even manage your available resources, let alone further development and importing of further uh, attracting uh, foreign direct investments. <laughs> The official exchange rate stands at approximately 55 birds per dollar. But the scarcity of hard currency has resulted in alarming black market that's about double the official rate. The government says it's trying to boost reserves by attracting foreign investments and expanding its export base. But for many small businesses here, that could be too little too late. And Octasfai, Africa Matters, Addis Ababa. So what's the way forward in dealing with the forex shortages? Joining me to discuss more on this is Boti Isaac, Program Coordinator, Social Action Nigeria. Hello, Isaac. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
So what has led Nigeria and other African countries to experience a dollar drought? Yeah, first of all, we need to understand that um, we do not produce locally, we do not produce dollar locally. And therefore, the only way to assess it is to earn it. And how do you earn it? You earn it by selling to the other part of the world at the uh, global market. Either you are selling crude or you are selling manufactured products and all of that. And um, if you look at the trajectory of um, development in Nigeria in the last few years, you will see that Nigeria as a nation has not been earning sufficient dollar to cover its domestic demands. And when you look at domestic demands, you see people, uh, the manufacturers demanding dollars to purchase input for their manufacturing processes. You see students demanding dollars to pay tuition fees. You see uh, people going on medical tourists to um, tourism to demanding for dollars to do all of this. Because of that high rate of demand, and we are not earning enough or we do not have sufficient dollar in our reserve to take care of these needs, then we are in this trap, uh, inability to meet with our de local demands. And that is what the most um, African countries are experiencing. We have become a consumer nation. We are, we are not, as a nation, um, earning sufficient revenue through economic, viable economic activities like trade and other means, or even foreign direct investment. Because if you look at the last five years, you will see that the value of our FDI, that is the foreign direct investment, is dropping significantly. In fact, the last four years, it has dropped from over $4, trillion, $4 billion to currently at $2.5 billion or $2.2 billion thereabout. And that's to tell you the challenge we have with dollar. So because we are not earning enough, it is difficult for us to have uh, enough to meet our local demand. And that is where uh, how we find ourselves in this kind of situation where we now have a, 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 the, the so-called dollar shortage situation. Until we are able to earn sufficiently, then we'll be able to take care of our uh, local demand for dollars. Is the idea of currency alternatives feasible? Would this work for African countries? Well, the first thing we need to understand about cur um, currency alternative is, one, to what extent can it measure up or increase the value of our local currency to meet up with the, uh, uh, the global currency, the, the dollar, for instance. And um, to what extent, again, can it be used as a means of exchange? Because one, there's no two ways about that. The, 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 the uh, what is it called? The, the centerpiece of uh, the global market is the dollar. So what can replace the dollar? Of course, there's nothing. So even if we introduce an alternative currency, it has to be something that will be circulated. One, if it is not done, if it's not the one within the local setting that is the one done locally, then it has to be between economic blocks. For example, now we have the uh, uh, this 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 economic block BRICS that um, China, I mean Russia, is spearheading. One of the agenda is to have a common trading currency within their partners. Nigeria is expected to be one of the members of, the, of BRICS uh, in the nearest future. But the fact again is, how much trade does Nigeria carry out with China, with Russia, with India, for instance, who are piloting these affairs? The, the volume of trade between these countries is significantly low compared to what we are having with Europe, with America, that use dollar as the means of exchange. So the question is, if they, they, we introduce an alternative currency, can it actually replace the, the, the role of dollars in, in our trading pattern or in our trading system? Of course it can't. So, but locally, maybe it could help address significantly the issue around inflation. It could also help strengthen trade with some countries like China. Uh, probably we may be trading in their local currency like yen and other and rupees and the case may be. But in terms of the global uh, scenario, uh, well, I'm not seeing that playing a major role, except we want to cut off our trade, uh, what is it called, the temple of business with uh, Europe or with America. And that is when we can say, okay, we can do without them and work with this alternative. But at the stand, they are still our major partners. Um, Nigerian um, trade, trade volume with Europe, which uh, America put together, is over 65% of Nigerian trade, foreign trade uh, uh, um, situation. I mean, what is it called? Portfolio. So that tells us that alternative currency might not be the way out. It cannot address that uh, in, a, in, 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 in a very large way, 
but it could also help to address local issues, local inflation issues, and then strengthen economic ties with countries that have adopted that currency as a means of exchange. But in terms of our trade, there is no, it's not going to make any significant impact because over 60% of our trade is done between Europe and America, and then maybe about 30% with Russia and thereabout, and then maybe 10% with, um, sorry, 30% with China and 10% with Russia and the like. So it can really not make any impact. Finally, do you think the economic hardship experienced this year by many ordinary Africans will lessen in 2024? Well, it all depends on measures put in place by the government of each of these countries. Our first is that we need to adopt a long-term approach to addressing the dollar liquidity situation. We need to find a way to minimize our importation uh, or reliance on foreign products so that we can save forex. I also need to find a way to improve our local production of whatever goods and services we have the capacity to produce so that we can end sufficient forex and reduce dependence, um, serious dependence on, on, on this foreign product that come at higher price, uh, cost rates rather, and it's affecting the, the, the consuming power of Nigerians or uh, Africans as a whole. So all of these measures need to be put in place so that we can be able to manage a situation come 2024 such that more people will not go in below the poverty line, more people will not be driven into poverty, purchasing power of um, Nigerians and Africans as a whole will not be reduced as a result of reliance on foreign importations and spending of our local, of, I mean foreign currency and also to find a way to balance our trade so that we can continue to have a situation where our local currency rally against um, uh, what is it called the the forest in the global market so all of these are measures that we need to put in place uh, as a nation as africans to be able to address the challenge that we may face come 2024. we head to the republic of congo now where there's a different kind of scarcity fish has become increasingly expensive staple because of overfishing and boil yields from traditional ways of breeding. But there is now a shift to above ground fish farming to combat the growing issue, as Briz can reports from Port Noah. <laughs> the men in the Republic of Congo have complained about the scarcity of fish for some years now. Bolan Lawson is a young fisherman who lives solely from fishing. Like other fishermen on Songolo Beach in Pointe Noire, he is affected by the scarcity of fish. Today, he returned with a small quantity of fish after spending days at the sea. Fish have become scarce. We travel miles to go fishing, but it doesn't produce anything. Today, for example, we came back empty-handed. We got nothing. At public markets, the price of fresh, smoked and dried fish has increased dramatically over the years. It's a situation that's affecting many households. Fish used to be cheaper at the market, with one or two dollars. You could buy enough fish to feed a whole family, but nowadays you have to spend up to ten dollars, and not everyone can afford to buy fish for ten dollars. To alleviate this problem, young people like Chris Bakolo have chosen above ground fish farming to reduce the deficit between supply and demand for fish. Here at his Kimia fish farm in Pointe Noir, a coastal city in Congo, the petrochemical engineer controls the production chain. We're involved in the entire fish production chain from hatchery and alvine production to grow out in intensive soil-free systems for catfish and floating cages for carp to processing and packaging. New techniques and improved strengths of a fish mean that the production times can be reduced and the quantity of a fish increased. Generally, local fish reproduce once or twice a year and require six months before being ready for sale at markets. But the fish of Thai strains raised on this fish farm reproduce four times a year and nearly three tons are transported to the market every three months. As well as managing the day-to-day -day running of his fish farm, Chris offers theoretical and practical courses in above ground fish farming techniques throughout the country. 
We also organize fish farming training sessions. We are in the process of creating the largest community of fish farmers in the Congo. We have already organized more than 10 sessions with over 300 participants. Some of them are already working and others aspire to become producers. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, Congo needs 150,000 tons of fish to feed the country a year. The ambition of fish farming enthusiasts like Chris Bacolo is to considerably reduce the country's dependence on import of frozen fish. Briskeu, Africa Matters, Point Noir, Republic of Congo. To Kenya next, where a government-led national school feeding program is hoping to reach at least 4 million children. The initiative known as Dishina County was launched this September in the capital, Nairobi. It's targeting public schools where some children have had to drop out early because they can't afford to buy lunch. And Masharia brings us that story. In the heart of Nairobi, where dreams and struggle intersect, we meet Pastelin, a dedicated vendor at Toy Market. She embodies the struggles of parents in her community who've long grappled with the challenge of providing enough food for their families. With two children enrolled in local schools, the burden of hunger had weighed heavily on her shoulders. Before the dish campaign, before the Dishi campaign, you would meet children who were of school age, but these children had not gone to school. The reason was because these children were hungry, and if you force them to go to school, it would be stressful for them. But now, after the Dishi campaign, you can go to school and ask to be registered. Dishi in a County is a campaign by the county government that focuses on providing subsidized meals to more than 250,000 students. Pastelin now contributes a modest amount to ensure her children receive 6,500 grams of food and a daily serving of fresh food. This lifeline has not only eased Pastelin's financial worries, but has also infused hope that her children can focus on their education and not being hungry. If students are given good foods which provide them with nutrients necessary for their learning, we believe that things like memory, um, concentration, um, problem, problem solving skills and many other factors that, in, that involve cognitive functions are taken care of, making them better placed in performance. This initiative doesn't just address hunger, it nurtures a sense of community and promises a brighter future for Nairobi's most vulnerable areas. Beyond the financial empowerment it brings, the message to students benefiting from the program is clear. Concentrate on your studies and the administration will ensure your well-being. Sometimes there is no food at home. Now, even if it's unfortunate that there is no food at home, you will know that every day at school there is Sakaja's food and you will eat. While the Dish in a County program has brought hope to many, some have raised concern about its long-term funding, sustainability and equitable distribution. But for most people here... The school feeding program in Kenya is sowing seeds of change, ensuring no child's dreams with our web. And every child's journey is a testament of hope. And Misharia, Africa Matters, Nairobi. The United Nations estimates that around 15% of the world's population lives with some form of disability. And being part of that minority group, these people often face daily discrimination at varying levels. But one woman in Uganda is pushing for social inclusion by presenting music so that deaf people can enjoy it. From Kampala, Darren Alan Cheyune reports. For almost a decade, Dorothy Timina Wasike has offered sign language services, and it all began at home. The greatest inspiration comes from my mom and my stepdad. They are both deaf. They've been happily married. They're happily married till today. So because she needs to be included in the society, 
that's, a, that's my biggest reason as to why I did sign language interpretation. And I took on sign language. In many parts of Africa, public events often lack facilities for those with hearing impairments. In 1995, Uganda became the only second country in the world to recognize sign language in its constitution. Timina is now making it more accessible after her job recently evolved into something completely new. She started presenting music for deaf audiences. I always listen to the song, get the lyrics if I have it on soft copy, on hard copy. So it plays as I'm trying to master the, lyri the lyrics. So at the end of it all, you go to a session, you go to, a, to one event, you, read, you, you listen to the song, you already know it. So you just sign it out and they enjoy it. The United Nations warns that the number of people with disabilities around the world is increasing because of an aging population and a rise in chronic health conditions. Government data shows there are nearly 1.3 million deaf people in Uganda. And Timina's works are now pushing event organizers to revise and host all-inclusive social gatherings. There is no any activity that can bring people together apart from music. So what we do is we go through music to call upon everyone to come, to come together or to come at the venue and interact and also enjoy. Because sometimes we are having festivals across the world and, those fest and these festivals, festivals are not inclusive. So when you have such festival which is inclusive to everyone, you bring awareness. The introduction of sign language at music events is a big welcome, but to be sustainable, it will require interpreters to work directly with artists and to broaden their language base to be able to cover as many songs as possible. Darren Alan Cheyune, Africa Matters, Kampala, Central Uganda. And staying in Uganda, we change focus to the government's renewed hope to move away from used clothing and encourage homegrown manufacturing. President Yuwere Museveni has announced a ban on importing second-hand clothes, but it hasn't been put into action by trade authorities. And while it's a sure sign Uganda's president wants his country to make and wear its own clothing, it comes at a cost. The thousands of people who rely on second-hand markets to make a living. Randolph Nogle reports. At the Owino Market in downtown Kampala, trade in second-hand clothes is thriving. And for vendors, resellers, and upcyclers alike, it's a lifeline now in danger of being cut off. There's a lot of people that come and buy for resale. People buy to take to their families. In August, Uganda's president, Yaori Museveni, announced a ban on the import of secondhand clothes at an event opening 16 new factories. Trade authorities have not yet enforced President Museveni's ban, which needs to be backed by a legal measure, like an executive order. It's part of a broader effort to help boost Ugandan textile manufacturing. By some estimates, one in three Ugandans, about 16 million people, wear used clothing. We have cotton. We can produce all these things that we are talking about in the second-hand market here in Uganda. Used clothes are popular because they offer variety at affordable prices, making this market accessible for all Ugandans. Even if someone walks into the market with only a dollar, they can buy clothing. Because they are cheap. Owino Market, Uganda's largest, employs 80,000 people. 70% are women. So if they come and ban us, number one, we are going to lose our jobs. Sustain our families is going to be very difficult. Yes. To protect people like peace, trade associations are calling for imports to be phased out instead of an outright ban. The government should ban these clothes. Let it be a gradual process so that even it prepares our traders not to lose money. It's not the first time Uganda, along with its neighbors, have pushed to transition to textiles manufactured in country. In 2016, seven East African countries, including Uganda, agreed on a used clothing ban Every country except Rwanda scrapped the deal after U.S. threats to pull preferential trade terms. Now, a renewed campaign is taking hold to phase out an industry reliant on donations from Western countries. I would lose my job. I will have no employment on me. I will have to um, find something else. 
a delicate trade-off between boosting homegrown manufacturing and the people whose livelihoods are woven into secondhand markets. Randolph Nogo, Africa Matters. And finally this week, we're turning the spotlight on Enugu in southeastern Nigeria, referred to as the Cold City. The locale is known for its scenic hilltop charm, rich cultural vibrancy, and a thriving economic dynamism. Let's take a closer look. our show this week. Share your thoughts and suggestions about the stories you've seen on this episode or ideas of what you'd like us to cover on X using the hashtag Africa Matters. You can also find us on YouTube by searching Tiara Toward Africa Matters. Thanks for watching and goodbye from Abuja.